And we're back. And we're here for the penultimate episode of Concealed Carry Corner for the year 2020. And for this last episode, I listened to the viewers. And the viewers had asked for a comparison of red dot versus traditional iron sight pistol. <laughs> Thank you very much for supporting our YouTube channel and supporting AE Tactical. We're proud to have amassed and assembled some of the world's most renowned brands, bringing the very best of product and gear to you right here in Trinidad and Tobago. AE Tactical is uh, an authorized agent for six hour products. And uh, for that, they've sponsored this video and provided these firearms for the review. And what we'll do here today is just really cover some of the advantages and disadvantages of the red dot optic in particular with traditional iron sights. So many of you would know that red dot optics are something that is of today's uh, craze in the firearms market. And uh, in particular, we have um, this uh, SIG pistol equipped with a red dot optic. So just first order of business here, magazines out, slide lock back and we have a clear firearm accordingly. So as you can see, this pistol is equipped with a red dot optic. And uh, the red dot optic really projects on a single window, a red dot. Um, that red dot is, um, is meant and is used for placement by the user on the target. And uh, that, that really allows um, that degree of accuracy from the firearm to be had by the user. The red dot is uh, aftermarket attachment in many cases to the firearm. Because a firearm has a red dot does not mean that you forego having uh, iron sights or traditional sights on your pistol. What we have uh, on this particular pistol, and like many pistols with red dot optics, uh, sights that are elevated and raised, typically called uh, suppressor high, or uh, optical high sights, um, and also in particular um, referred to as uh, sights that co-witness. Uh, co-witness is allowing those sights, um, iron sights, to be acquired uh, through the optical uh, window of the red dot. Um, in the eventuality, for any reason during uh, operation of the firearm, use of the firearm, that battery, uh, or the power source of the optic is, 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 is eliminated or, or non-functioning, uh, a user can utilize the uh, iron sights that are co-witnessing with the red dot for sight uh, picture, sight alignment, and target acquisition accordingly. Um, that said, with the red dot, it is uh, absolutely lovely to shoot any pistol with a red dot. It is super fun. Once the red dot obviously is, um, is aligned or zeroed to that particular firearm, and once the user understands the principles of acquiring the red dot, it does take some getting adjustment too. That is something we do at our indoor range and training facility as well, where we provide guidance um, to users on how to utilize or best utilize the red dot optic, red dot sight and in particular, how that presentation of the pistol should be done in order to uh, best utilize that red dot optic there as well. Red dots, um, however, do have some drawbacks, and those drawbacks are the fact that um, periodically, from time to time, they can go down, uh, depending on uh, maintenance or, or function of the product or what have you, as we had mentioned earlier. That is one drawback in, in an instance if the, the dot's not functioning and we rely on that dot uh, to perform, and in particular, after a period of time, getting accustomed to present presentation of the pistol with the red dot, it could be quite awkward for the user uh, to have to fall back on those iron sights. Um, and as you could see, it's a no-brainer. It does add some bulk, which is also considered a disadvantage in some cases, particularly if the pistol is concealed. If the pistol is being utilized in a duty holster or configuration, which we have lovely Safari Land uh, duty holsters for those as well that accommodate the red dot, it is less of an issue. But if it's being concealed, possibly it couldn't be an issue for some and a bit of a drawback as it adds some extra height 
and bulk, so to speak, to the firearm as well. And I would just say one of the last disadvantages or drawbacks is from time to time, again, not necessarily here at AE Tactical, but from time to time, uh, it is bit of a bit of a dis, uh, disadvantage and hindrance as there are not so many uh, holsters or options uh, from time to time for certain pistols. Um, and it may be a drawback to you uh, making that decision to acquire a, a red dot optic. Um, really, apart from that, with, with some training, uh, with some, some uh, proper equipment, support equipment, I, I think that the red dot is um, certainly a big, big plus. Really, with that, um, the red dot optic is, um, is, is, is a neat item to look at, uh, but it must suit your needs. And I'll just say last but not least, it's always nice to have the option, even in the event that you don't wish to carry conceal, to have that option to add the optic on for when you're on the range or for duty use or what have you. Um, it's always good to have an optic ready pistol, so to speak. How to identify an optic ready pistol is that at the rear portion of the slide, you would typically find that there's a cutout that is uh, there to accept the optic and as well a, a plate to cover that space, so to speak, if uh, you don't wish to constantly carry that optic uh, on you. And that's it. Uh, have a great uh, holiday season. Thank you very much for supporting us. Stay COVID aware, sanitize, social distance, and uh, be responsible. Thank you very much. We'll see you back in the new year. And all the best to you and your families.